Hello everyone, welcome to UMC Students Podcast. In this series of six episodes, we will analyze life and ideas of one of the greatest writers and thinkers to have ever lived, Leo Tolstoy. Our classmate covered Tolstoy's agonizing choice between death and life in episode four. For episode number five, I, Somi Park, will be your host. This episode is titled Existential Despair, and I have with me Chemin, Jihu, and Blank. So, Chemin, let's begin with Tolstoy's own words. My position was terrible. I knew I could find nothing along the path of reasonable knowledge except a denier of life, and there, in fact, was nothing but a denier of reason, which was yet more impossible for me than a denier of life. My heart was oppressed with a painful feeling, which I can only describe as a search for God. I returned to what belonged to my earliest childhood. I knew that without it, I could not live. Then I will present about my opinion. I believe that in this passage, Tolstoy is feeling existential despair, and this sentence shows his anguish. In this passage, I think Tolstoy is in deep anguish between reason and fate. Reason is telling Tolstoy the denier of life, and fate is telling him the denier of reason. He is not finding a reasonable purpose for his life, so we can feel his deep existential despair in this sentence. Reason denied life, so he went to fate, but fate denied reason. But I think he was a modern man in this part, so he couldn't deny reason because he couldn't believe in something that wasn't reasonable. He also said that denying reason was more impossible for him than denying life. Even if he accepted fate, he wouldn't be able to get a reasonable answer. So I think terrible position is a metaphor. Of his anguish and pain in wanting to find a purpose for his life between reason and fate, this passage shows the rational side of Tolstoy. But this raises the question that science can't explain the meaning of life and that everything has no meaning. In this second passage, Tolstoy says. He is being oppressed by painful emotions, such as the emotion of searching for God, which I think represents the pain of his faith in God. Tolstoy says, "To truly know something, we first need to understand it. Our knowledge comes from understanding. So, in order to believe in God, we first need to know what God is." Chemin,、mm, I'd like to ask you something. Uh yes, so me. So, do you think that in order to truly know something, you must first understand it, or do you think it can be something else? Um, I agree with Tolstoy that understanding is necessary to know something, but I also believe that it is possible to truly realize or know something. Through personal experience and observation.、Mm, thank you. That was a great answer. Thank you. In the third passage, Tolstoy said that he went back to his oldest childhood. I think this shows that Tolstoy is focusing on his childish question again, the real question. He went back to the fundamental, simple question of exploring what is the purpose of life. The fact that he can't live without it in this passage indicates that he can't give up considering the purpose of life.、Um, do you guys have any opinion about this passage? I have an an opinion. I'm sure you could go ahead. I think it might be going back to a simpler time when faith wasn't complicated by complex thinking, a time when belief felt natural. Almost like a part of who he is. In the end, even though he went through a lot of this anguish and confusion, at the end of his life, he came back to the beginning, back to his childhood faith. Oh, that's so interesting. Um, I'll continue. At the end of 
Chapter eight, I felt that he realized that fate gives more meaning to life, but he doesn't want to admit it because religion is not reasonable. Tolstoy believed that happiness cannot, cannot give meaning to life because it is subjective and humans can't sustain life in a state of happiness. However, Tolstoy believed that love can give meaning to life. I got something to ask you, Chenmin. Why did Tolstoy think love could give meaning to life? Um, okay, Jihu. I think love is also subjective, but because Tolstoy believed that uh, through love, humans can find dignity without losing their moral values, love is an important element of life and can give meaning to life by making us realize the importance of human relationships. Thank you, Chamin. That was our awesome opinion. So let's move on to Jihu. Um, I think this quote is um, also quite a profound statement. Tolstoy seems to be dealing with a clash between reason and faith. There is a strong desire for something beyond logic, a search for God. It's like his stuck in a dilemma. On one side, pursuing reason feels like it takes a weight of life's energy. And one, the other, faith um, seems to go against reason, making, a, making it a tough choice for him. The idea of a search for God is interesting. Um, it suggests a deep spiritual journey, a longing for meaning that goes beyond just logic. Um, Jia, I have one question. Sure, Chenming, go ahead, ask to you. Uh, you should. You said that he came back to the beginning, back to his childhood faith. So, what does Thursday's faith mean in this passage? Um, I think that in this passage, Tolstoy's return to his childhood faith signifies a profound shift or reconnection with a simpler form of belief. By mentioning his early childhood, he suggests um. A time when his understanding of faith was unburdened by complex reasoning or, or like intellectual struggles. Tolstoy's faith in this context um, represents a return to a more innocent and intrinsic connection with spiritual beliefs. Thank you, Gio. That was a great answer. Thank you. And the contrast between reason and faith is also interesting. It's like his torn between wanting to understand things intellectually and the emotional need for something beyond logic. And notice how he ends with, I knew that without it, I could not leave. It's not just a thinking thing for him. It's something like he feels he must have to exist. Achihu, I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. So, what do we think about Tolstoy's situation? Is this a common struggle between reason and fate, or is it just his personal journey? Um, I think it's something many people can relate to. We've all faced the com- conflict between reason and faith, trying to find a like a balance that gives meaning to our lives. Tolstoy being honest about his inner conflict makes it easy to connect with. It's not about solving the struggle, but recognizing its importance in the human experience. Mm, thank you, Jiu. I understood well. So what do you think of Leo Tolstoy in this passage, Somi? Um, Leo Tolstoy, a world-renowned author and a representative Russian writer. He's considered a master of literature and is well-known for his masterpieces, War and Peace and Anachronema. A book that resembles him from the beginning to him the lo- to the end of his life is Confession. In this book, he expresses well the reasons of living, the existence of God, his religious perspective, and his inner conflicts and collisions. His situation, especially at the time of his discord, which is the terrible position, is filled with skepticism and the uh, meaninglessness of being alive. He shows his existential despair. He strongly argues that modern people arrogantly think that we know everything, but we are not better than the past and our ancestors. But the farmers are different. Unlike modern people who are increasingly impatient, 
He says they are the most important people because they persevere, wait, and gain, and achieve things entirely on their own with nature. Um, so me, I have a question. Yeah, sure, go ahead. Um, why is it important to persevere, wait, gain, and fulfill with nature? Um, unlike people like farmers who persevere, wait, gain, and fulfill with nature, according to Tolstoy, modern people gradually lose their patience, are disturbed by education, and gradually lose even the meaning of their life. While farmers surrender to nature and live with the fact that they can't do everything they want, they gain something from it and find the meaning of life through their own strengths. That's, that's why to persevere, wait, gain, and fulfill in nature is important. Okay, thank you. I understood well. Um, the real problem, he says, is education and edu educators who disturb us who already have all answers inside. He had a conflict with reason and faith. He shows his anguish about life, saying that science does give, doesn't give us the answers to the reason of our lives. And he is shown still agonizing of life. As he says in the quote, science can't give the answer except for the denier of life. But faith denies reason, science. However, he couldn't deny life, and denying reason was even harder for him. This aspect of him made me think a lot, but I don't think there is an answer to life. Depending on the person, anything can be the answer to each other's, each person's life. Like Tolstoy, it could be love, it could be nature, it could be farming, or it could be anything. Um, so me, can I ask something? Yeah, sure. Uh, you said that different people have different purpose in life. So what is the purpose of your life? Um, this is a tricky question. As a modern person who believes in science rather than religious belief or faith, my purpose in life is success and live a less life. Furthermore, love is an important factor of my life. Thus, loving the people around me is also another purpose. I can say that my ultimate goal is to succeed in my only life and to create and live a successful life with people I love. Okay, thank you. Toristo eventually decided to go back to his only childhood. He goes back to feel and find the freshness, lightheartedness, the need for love, and strong of faith that he mentioned in episode one. These are the things that you could only feel in childhood. So let's move on to black. Based on the word, words of the previous Tolstoy, we learned that he began to think about the meaning of life. And this passage explains his struggle with these questions. Uh, this quote demonstrates the realist part of Tolstoy. He believes in reason more. But science cannot explain the meaning of life. The answer uh, it ultimately gives is that life has no meaning and everything is nothing. Moreover, he also brings up the conflicts uh, between faith and reason. Faith re uh, but he favors reason more. Favors reason more. And he believes that uh, dino of reason is more impossible than dino of life. This reminds me of my own personal experiences. I, I used to I used to think that everything needed needed a reason, but I realized that uh, so many things actually have no reason, like human behavior. Uh, when I started to think about whether there was a meaning to life, I was in a deep struggle to choose my old world view or to change myself. Uh, I don't think it's easy to change yourself like Tolstoy. I was miserable but unlike him. I wasn't religious, which led me to my old uh, wrote with review. 
uh, so I can relate more to Tolstoy's struggle as well as his pain. For the, his later reference to pursuit of God, I feel that he be, uh, he again learns a bit towards idealism, which makes him a conflicted person. Right? Maybe it's not idealism. Maybe God is real. I don't think so. Uh, the facts that his suffering of his is a result of the quest for, uh, for God suggests that a spiritual or existential quest, a longing for meaning or connect beyond the confines of reason. Or it is possible that he is in a kind of dino of ex extendalism as he believes that extendalism does not justify being alive so he can only put hope in faith 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 i.e god uh, in the first quote he mentioned will the freshness light hurt heartedness the need for uh, for love and strength of faith which you have in childhood ever return better time than when the two best virtu virtues in, in innocent joy and uh, boundless desire for love were the only motive motive in life so i think he was more in favor of back face back Hey, thank you for your awesome opinion blank and thank you everyone it was a pleasure to have you all